raw amendments I provide the plants with Cause I learned from nature and I like to match it High half way more higher than average Man, life's so fast, ain't no time for practice now Alright, here we go Professor, Professor Terrence over here Oh, look at that Alright, anyway, uh, so uh Sorry about that, knocking the camera around So today we are talking about Balancing nutrients and uh, especially when it comes to organic living soil growers, uh, this is really important because um, we are in charge of balancing our nutrients, seeing as we're not getting pre-mixed bottled nutrients or anything like that. Uh, we need to make sure that we're getting um, equal amounts of each nutrient, or the right amounts, you should say, um, for what our plant needs, at least roughly, even though the, uh, the microbes and the soil food web are going to do a good job of delivering, working with the roots to deliver the plants just what they need, um, it's still important that we have at least somewhat of a balanced ratio going in, um, or pretty balanced ratio. So uh, I'm going to give an example of how I go about doing that and the math that I use. Right, and uh, for this example, we'll be using these three nutrients here. So you can see we've got the alfalfa, the kelp meal, and the bone meal. And these, of course, are all natural, coming from down to earth. Um, and we're going to want to balance these out so that we're getting a nice balanced mix of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those two numbers you see in there. So I'm going to explain uh, how we do that. Here we go. Make sure it's able to even see this. All right. So as you can see, if you were looking at the nutrients, uh, the numbers for all of them, probably hard to remember all at one glance, but here they are. The alfalfa meal. I'm not even sure if I spelled that right. doesn't matter. Uh, is... 2.5, that's the nitrogen, 0.5, that's the phosphorus, and then 2.5, that's the potassium. The kelp meal, let's see, kelp, is 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, Two. Two. And you can put the dashes if you want, that's how it usually shows it on the uh, packaging. And then the last one that we're using in this example is fish bone meal. <laughs> and this one is four, twelve, zero. All right. So, uh, ultimately what we're going to have to do, um, well let me show you an example first of all to see how this is going to go. Uh, we're basically going to have to, using these numbers, get it so that when we add them all up down the line, they add up to a nice balanced amount or something close to balanced or what we're looking for. You might want different ratios depending on if you're in vegging or flour. But um, just to show you right now, if we were to add all of these up here, let's see, we get... 2.514 comes out to 7.5. Uh, 7.5. And then 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Um, oftentimes the 0 0.1 is so small that I'll just kind of negate it, count it as a zero, just to simplify things. Um, but anyway, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.12, um, plus 12. You could either do, like I said, I'm, I just oftentimes just negate this or round it down to zero and then add it back in if I need to. But anyway, um, 12.6, anyway. okay. and then 2.5 plus 2, 4.5. So uh, this right here um, actually isn't too bad, uh, but as you can see, pretty high in the phosphorus. Um, you might not want something that's this high in phosphorus, a little bit low in the um, potassium. Um, and the numbers, um, th it's not actually gonna be more concentrated than the individuals. You'd have to divide by three to get the concentration. So don't don't worry about the concentration because we're increasing volume too. It's not actually getting, the numbers aren't actually higher. It's not like you'd have to add less when you mix it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, what we want is something more balanced than this. So what we're gonna have to do is increase the amounts of some of these or decrease the amounts of some to get to what we're looking for. So, uh, 
luckily I've actually already done the math beforehand so I kind of know the shortcut to what I'm looking for but just to give an example um, we know that we need more potassium and that we're already good on phosphorus so we're not going to want to add more fishbone meal if anything we might decrease that um, and kelp meal is what's got the most uh, potassium without adding other nutrients so we're probably going to want to increase that um, but anyway let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and try one where I'm going to multiply this times 2 and then divide this <laughs> by 2 so let me just do another page to make this easier just to run that example um, if I were to add twice as much kelp meal as alfalfa meal and then half as much fish bone meal as alfalfa meal um, then I would get something that looks like this. I'd get 2.5 dash point five dash 2.5 not finishing my fives here <laughs> um, and then because I'm multiplying the kelp by 2 we'd get 2 and again, I'm just going to negate this, but it's a point to, you know, barely anything. And then four. And then we're going to divide the, the fish bone by two. We're going to see what that comes out to. We're going to get uh, 2.5 six, zero. Right. And then uh, we're going to add all these up. Again, to see the ratio between the nutrients, what we're looking for ultimately is the numbers to all be the same. It doesn't matter how high or low the numbers are objectively, just the, the balance between the numbers, we want them all to be in a similar range. Um, or in this case, I'm actually going into flour, so I might, e I might even want more phosphorus and potassium. But uh, let's run add these up, see what we get. Let's see. 5. 6.7. And then 6.5. Would you look at that? So now we've got a pretty balanced number here. Um, honestly, uh, for most um, most cycles of growth, especially veg or maybe even flower, I would think that this would be pretty good. You could go with this, and um, it might be the case that your plants are using more of one nutrient than the other, and that you'll run out faster of one. Um, oftentimes, especially in veg, you're going to be using more nitrogen, um, less uh, potassium, and then in flour, you'll be using more phosphorus and potassium. Um, but ultimately, a nice balanced number like this, uh, usually pretty good to go with. So this is one example of something that I could go with that would give me uh, pretty much what I'm looking for in the garden. And this would be, ultimately, it would be, if I were to make the fish bone one part fish bone and then the kelp meal would be uh, four parts because it's four times the amount of the fish bone and then two parts kelp or alfalfa meal so uh, using these uh, nutrients that I've already got the alfalfa, the kelp and the fish bone I would want to go a little bit lower on the fish bone do about half the amount compared to the alfalfa and then I would want to do double the amount of kelp meal compared to the alfalfa um, so it depends on how much I'm mixing how much I need um, this could either you know whatever unit this could be cups could be tablespoons it could be gallons I mean however much you're mixing but it would be one part two parts four parts and that would give me a nice balanced ratio and uh, you could do this with any nutrients you're mixing um, However many you have, you would just add them all together. Um, in the same way, you, you know, line them up so that the nitrogens, phosphoruses, and potassiums all line up. Add them all together, see what the final balance is, and then if it's not what you're looking for, you can multiply, divide, that kind of thing to get to where you want to be. Um, this one uh, is what, I, like I said, this is what I'm going to be going with. Uh, here, I'll probably be going with tablespoons just because I'm just doing a couple indoor plants. I'm not really doing a large amount, but I can rest assured that if I do one part fish bone, two parts alfalfa, and four parts kelp, I'm going to end up with a nice balanced ratio of nutrients that's going to give my plants and the ecosystem in the soil 
everything they need to be happy, thriving, and uh, you know, give us what we want to. So yeah, that's about it. Um, that is how I balance uh, the math on the nutrients to get what I need. And uh, actually, I do need to go mix the nutrients right now. So I'll even give a quick example of um, you know how I'm going to mix all this together. Let me show you. All right, here we go. Uh, nothing too complicated. Got the uh, cheapest cup I could find, of course, for top dressing. By the way, if you don't catch yourself a large bag or stack of red Dixie cups for your indoor operation, I recommend you get you some. They are some of the most versatile and uh, useful yeah, tools you can have in the garden. Right, hold on one second. Just getting this one open. I haven't even opened this one yet. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna start with the uh, alfalfa meal. Start on top there, it's gonna go down one by one. Alfalfa meal is gonna be two scoops. And like I said, it doesn't matter what your measuring device is as long as it's the same for each amendment. Um, but in this case, I'm just using a regular ass spoon. I'm gonna do two scoops of alfalfa. I should try and make it some sort of yeah, it's not really going to be measured that accurately. It doesn't matter. One scoop. I'm going to try and keep them all about that size. Let's see if I succeed. And two scoops. All right. Next is the alfalfa. I mean, uh, next is the kelp. And uh, the kelp, I'm going to be doing four scoops because it is four parts. There you go. So, uh, uh -huh. again, try to keep them all the same size as every other scoop for each amendment. Every other scoop, every other, I mean, you know, the whole time, they should all be the same scoop size. This isn't the best measuring device, obviously, because it's so inconsistent. But two. I'm trying my best, you know. It'd be better if you had something that actually measured more consistently. Three. Okay, and last but not least, one solid scoop of fishbone meal, which uh, I'm not liking the smell of. Alright, and uh, now we've got a little blend here. I do want to make sure that I mix it up a little bit so it's nice and evenly blended throughout. Makes it stirry. Alright, with the old mixy stirry there, the old spin around the block, well one time for the one time, alright, I think she's good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply this now, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to record that because this is in the very back where I'm not able to really get the camera to, um, but yeah, this will be the blend that I'm using to uh, top dress my indoor plants right now. And I'll also be adding a little bit of uh, worm castings right on top afterward to make sure that there's enough microbiology in there to help break this all down. Uh, but yeah, that's how I go about mixing my uh, organic amendments to make sure that I'm getting a balanced ratio of all the nutrients that my plants need to be happy and healthy. And uh, that's how you can do the same. So uh, I really hope this helps anybody out there who's looking to balance their amendments for their indoor garden or even their outdoor garden in an organic way that doesn't rely on any pre-mixed stuff um yeah hopefully this helps you uh, in your ventures and uh if it does don't forget to hit that like hit that subscribe and uh, until next time stay high stay healthy and always stay active cheers everybody Perfect. the good go young i could die any day tap my name in a search change the y to an a i leave clues in a stylish way and seek patterns till my mind is aflame everything is okay it's just that your mind is a slave find freedom once your mind is the way